In that video, you will start learning about one of the most versatile data types in Python, lists. Lists have a very large number of applications, and I decided to break it down in two parts. In that first video, we will learn about the basic operations on lists. In the second video, we will focus on the existing list methods. To start, we should know how to define a list. You first define the variable name, followed by the assignment operator then the square brackets. Elements inside the square brackets are separated by commas. Let's create our first list. Our first list will be called names and I will assign to the first element Rodrigo, the second element uh, let's call it Bob and the third element Oli. Perfect. So that list has three elements and each element is of data type string. I can also create an empty list, I'll call it empty. I'll give the square brackets and there is no element inside it. All right, we just create two lists. Okay, important things that you should always remember about lists. Lists are mutable. You can add, remove, modify and delete items. A list can also contain multiple data types. Then we can create a list called mixed. And now we start giving different data types. So the first element is going to be an integer. The second element, a string. Let's call it house, for instance. The third, let's call it, uh, let's call a boolean. So false. The fourth element, another list. I give you, I give the first element of this list a float. And the second element of that list, another uh, a string. Let's call it house, only Bob, hello. All right, perfect. So you should remember that a list can also contain multiple data types. And lastly, that's the feature that I find the most interesting and you should learn it. And that's the reason why I decided to put it in a second video. A list comes with a great amount of methods that are ready to be used and you just need to learn how to use them. And again, we're gonna talk about that in the second video. In this video, we start learning about the basic operation on lists. The first operation is how to determine the length of a given list. In this example, we have a list called names with three elements, Rodrigo, Bob and Oli. If I want to get the length of that list, and actually the length of any list, we need to use a function called len, and len is short for length. If I run that code, how we should type Python and the name of the file, that case list basics, we get three. Now, in case we want to add one element, let's say Jesse, if I run it and if I run that code again, we get four. So there are four elements here. It's very basic, but we're gonna be using that a lot, especially when you start talking about for loops. So our first element or our first operation is how to get the size of a given list. The second operation we will learn is how to retrieve individual element of a list. We do that by that idea of indexing. An index in Python always starts with zero. So why is it important knowing about index? Because when you want to retrieve a single element of a list, we should type the name of a list and then open and close square brackets. Now. I should be giving as argument the index of that element. So in that case, as index starts with zero, Rodrigo is the first element, therefore Rodrigo has index zero. Bob has index one and Oli has index two. So that's why it's very important that you know that index starts with zero. Let me just type it here. Index in Python starts with zero. All right. Now, let's retrieve Bob. Bob is, Rodrigo is zero, then Bob is one. Now I can print that element. So that element should be Bob and the type of that element should be a string. Let's see if you get it right. We get it right. So Bob and the type is string. Therefore, all is gonna be two. We run it, Oli and the class also string. So just to also see Rodrigo, I clean it, run it, perfect. So that's the way you access a single element counting from the left to right. 
but you can also count from the right to left. So it, you can start counting from the last element. How to do that? You just need to give minus one and minus one always point to the last element. Okay, if I run that code, you see that I get Oli. So if Oli is minus one, you can guess that Bob is gonna be minus two. Perfect. That's the way you access a single element of a list. The third operation you're gonna learn is how to reassign the value of any list element. If you understood that idea of index, that's gonna be quite easy. I will just comment all of that, bring the reassignment example. Again, we're gonna work with a list called names. And now I want to replace Rodrigo by something else. So how to do that? First, I have to access Rodrigo. We just learned how to do that. I type the name of the list, open and close the square brackets and give its index. It's gonna be zero. Now we can use the assign operator and now give any value. Now I'm gonna replace Rodrigo by Walt. Perfect. Let's also replace or reassign the last element. So we just saw that we can also point to the last element using minus one. So we replace Oli by Jack. If I now run that code, we see that we have Walt, Bob, and Jack. Walt just replaced Rodrigo. Bob, it's, so it's there since the beginning, and Jack just replaced Oli. So that's the way you can reassign values to a single element in a list. As an additional information, I'm going to teach you how to access elements inside nested list. What are nested list? Is basically a list which contains another list. So here we have a list called mixed list, and that list contains house, which is a string data type, two, it's an integer, another list, and two Boolean data types. Now, the exercise is how can I access the first element of that sub list here? We do that by first accessing that list. How to do that? We call the list name, which is a mixed list. Now open and close brackets and access that list. Which element is that? Or sorry, which index is that? Zero is house. That's the, the first one. So zero, one, two. Now, when you do that, we just access that list. Now, you can either use zero to access the first element and one to access the, for the first, sorry. You can either use zero to access the first element or one to access the second element. So that's the way you access element of nested list. If I now run that code and here actually there is no second number, but we can create that. Let's just put it here and give it one. Then we run it and then we get one and two. So one is that first element and two is the second element. Perfect. That's how you access elements inside nested list. At this moment, we know how to retrieve a single element of a list. But what about if you want to get slices, if you want to get just part of that list? So now we're going to be learning how to slice a list. So let me just comment that code and you bring the slice example. So here again we have a list called names and it contains Mary, Bob, Ollie, Walt and Jesse. What if you want to get a sub, a sub list of that list which is going to contain Bob and Ollie? For that we start as we do when we want to get a single element so we just type the name of the list, open and close the square brackets and now the syntax is a bit different. So we should give the start index plus colon, then the end index. What you need to know here, the start index will contain that element. So I want Bob, right? That's going to be zero, one. Perfect. Now I want to stop in Walt and Walt is zero, one, two, three. If I give three here, I, so if I were you, I would expect him to be getting Walt. But if I run that code, see what we get. I just get Bobby and Ollie. Why? Because the end index is always excluded. So if you want to get Walt, you should always give the next element. Now, if I run it, 
we finally get what? Again, the first or the start index is included and the end index is excluded. Now, if you want to get the whole list from Bobby on, no, from, L, from Oli on, let's just use Oli, you don't need to type the end index. Let's see. Perfect. Now we have from Oli to Jesse. Finally, I want to try to clear some confusion on list concatenation and list repetition. If I comment that code here and bring the list concatenation example, I have the following question for you. In case you have two lists in that example, one is called even, the second one is called odd. Even has as elements 2, 4, 6, all integer numbers, and odd has also integer numbers, but 1, 3, 5 as elements. If I just try to calculate even plus odd, so the list even plus the list odd, what are you expecting to get? If I clean that code and run it, but before run it, I tell you that there are a lot of people who are just starting with Python that gonna think that I'm get I'm gonna get two plus one three four plus three seven six plus five eleven, but actually what you get is basically concatenation. So you get the first list added, so you append just the second list to the first one. That example is same same with string. So if I just type here a and give one string, for instance h then b and type i when i want to print a plus b as you can expect we get hi and that's concatenation and concatenation also happens with list perfect finally to wrap up we're going to talk about repetition let me just comment all of these and then we have one repetition example. Same, same. We have a list. And now I want to get that list and multiply by three. What are you expecting to get? If I run that code, you will not get three into zero and three into one. What you get is that list three times. So zero, one, zero, one, and zero, one. There you are. You just learned the most useful basic operations on list. As I mentioned in the beginning of that video, lists come with methods that are ready to be used, and we will learn them in the next video. As my last comment, if you are interested in the codes we develop here, let me know and I can create a GitHub account for this channel. Thanks for watching.